America, the land of cowboys, McDonald's, and highly advanced technology. Ever since the US has existed, we have seen development on their soil and all around the world. Currently, I'm in the USA as an exchange student, which has given me the chance to see the similarities and differences between my home country and the United States. So, outside of being, Macedonia is located above Greece and it gained its independence in 1991, and before that, it was a part of Yugoslavia. Now, we're seeing the aftermath of being a part of a socialist nation. Outside of being freaked out about how much Ameri in America everything is spread out and how much Macedonians are missing out on peanut butter cups, Reese specifically, I came to the conclusion that in America, people have more than the, just their normal political meaning of the word freedom. People have the, the freedom to create and bring the crazy ideas to life. You see, America is a first world country, which means it's a democratic nation that has political and economical stability. In other words, the USA is powerful. Meanwhile, my home country is a developing nation. And, and referring to a developing nation as a third world country is considered offensive. The terms first world, second world, and third world countries came during the Cold War. Any country referred as a first world country would be influenced by the USA, Japan, and UK. Meanwhile, a second world country would be influenced the Soviet Union, China, and at the time, Yugoslavia. We can come to the conclusion that these terms are outdated because the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia don't even exist anymore. So when I say I come from a developing country, people imagine that I live in mud houses and just like in the 1800s, which leads to me being asked weird questions like, do you have phones? Do you have televisions? Can women wear pants? And my favorite one, do we have orange juice? <laughs> we do. <laughs> but what it actually means is just that we're less industrialized and less politically and economically stable. Yes, in many developing countries, there's people that live with no food resources, no access to water, and no electricity. But thank God, in Macedonia, I have all of those things. But there are people, there are, there are countries like that. And in developing countries, there's 195 in the world, but only 152 are considered developing. And in this category, you can find China and Russia. But let's work on Macedonia again. So 23% of the people have no access to water. 20 live under the poverty line, and 16.7% are unemployed. Meanwhile, taking these characteristics and comparing them to the United States, where only 16, 13.4% of the people live under the poverty line, 4.2% of the people are considered unemployed, and 100% of the population has access to electricity, we can come to the conclusion that Americans live in a country that has good economy, most of them have well-paying jobs, and entrepreneurs are granted the possibility to make all sorts of products because Americans keep on asking for variety and items to make their life easier. And this leads to their supermarkets being highly packed. Being an entrepreneur is hard everywhere, but in the USA, we can see that most of our everyday products have been created. In this category, we can find e the internet, email, s uh, skyscrapers, traffic lights, submarines, and most importantly, chocolate chip cookies. But I keep on wondering, how would the people of a developing country react to these changes and innovative ideas? So for my first example, I'll use Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Gates and Allen both dropped out of college. Bill Gates from Harvard and Paul Allen from Washington State University. Both of them worked for six years until they created Microsoft and became one of the smartest people in the, one of the richest and smartest people of, <laughs> all around the world. So how would uh, this work in a developing country? If you didn't have a stable job for six years, you probably would have ended up poor, hungry, or even homeless. But in America, you have what I call the Head Start Theory. Here, in the group of college students who have dropped out and leaped to success, we can find Lady Gaga, James Dean, and even Ralph Lauren. They, were, they had the head start because they were in an environment that allowed them to, have, to make change and be different and had the resources to do all of that. 
Meanwhile, comparing this with a developing country, you wouldn't really have the resources to do it. In America, individualism is a big thing, and everyone is their own person, seen by their own achievements, and when you want to discover yourself, usually you end up finding something new or creating something new, which ends up in the world maybe making a big difference. So how would a con developing country react to something new? Well, or a European country, in my opinion. Galileo Galilei is, an, is from Italy, and he created the telescope and said that the world goes around the sun. So how did the population in Europe react to, all, to, to this brilliant mine? Well, of course, they imprisoned him and banned all of his studies. Because why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> But what it actually means is that America has the freedom I'm talking about. You have the freedom to create and to discover new things. And you have the access and the acceptance to create these new, these new things, new creations. And on the market, you have the diversity to promote them. And nonetheless, when you make them, not many people will question, question you to an extent, and you'll have all the resources to do it. So, the best way I want to dis describe the differences between a developing and a developed country is Elon Musk, because he was actually born in South Africa, which is a developing country. It has all of the characteristics of being a developing country. Low access to water, people get low to minimum wage, but despite all that, Elon Musk was born in a wealthy family. But when he moved to Canada and later on immigrated to the USA, he created the Tesla, a vehicle which is still unavailable in the USA. It's when, he, when he, he moved from Canada to the USA, where he created the Tesla, a vehicle which is still unavailable in South Africa. From a foreigner's point of view, when we come to America, we see the spread out institution, the big shops, and the businesses, and think of all of the opportunities. In the USA, we see what the word freedom really means. Here, everyone is accepted, no matter the race, the gender, sexual orientation, or religion. In the USA, the word freedom means more than your political dictionary term, the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hesitation or restraint. In the USA, you can be free. No matter if that means creating a plane, like the Wrights brothers did in North Carolina in 1903, or being, a, or being from Canada and coming to Massachusetts and creating a game of basketball, like Dr. James Nasmith did in 1891. America is the land of the free. Thank you.